Welcome to Concord United Methodist Church. You are a part of a loving and caring community. Welcome home to all of our uh, members of Concord United Methodist Church. And if you are visiting us for the first time during this virtual worship, we welcome you and um, hang out with us for a while and enjoy our time of worship. Let's worship together. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart, not be all else to me, save that thou art, thou my best Lord, by day or by night. Please join us with the responsive reading. Freedom is coming. We can hear it in the voices of the oppressed. Hope is coming. We can see it in the eyes of all those who despair. God is here. Come, let us worship the Lord. We count on God's presence with us to guide, heal, and uplift our spirits. We gather this morning appreciating our freedom to worship God. May God continue to bless this land. We draw near to the God who rules over all nations. May God continue to bless our country and all the countries in the world. We seek to live in harmony and peace together with all peoples on the earth. May God continue to establish peace on earth and help us understand that it begins in our hearts. Finally, as we come to worship you, we ask for wisdom to live the lives that you have prepared for us. So we not abuse the freedoms we share. And we hold in our hearts the knowledge that even though there is power in our freedom, to you belong the glory. God bless America. Amen. Where our song uh, as we begin our worship is for the healing of the nations. Pray, pray. 
time that we go over our mission and ministries, we are still active in the community, uh, providing meals and doing all kinds of things. Our committees are still meeting via Zoom. We are just as active as if we were going to 1645 West Street. We're doing it all virtually. The celebration for our dear Wanda Close, uh, Oglesby Close Hall is named after Wanda, will be on Saturday, July 11th at 9.30 a.m. It will be an online service uh, via Zoom and please email Pastor Lee so he can uh, send you out the invitation. CUMC Online Fellowship, we're gonna do an online fellowship because we miss you and we miss each other. And so that will be Sunday, July 12th at 11.30 a.m. You watch the Sunday service first, then join the online fellowship afterwards. You're gonna have to bring your own treats uh, and everything because Sandy won't be able to drop the treats off at your house. So you bring your own treats and then invitations will be sent out to the group email. And if you don't regularly receive an email, um, please contact Pastor Lee so that he can make sure you get that invite. Looking forward to seeing you. And the sermon in a nutshell. Uh, you know, we used to get that beautiful colored paper uh, with the sermon in a nutshell so we could take it home and study throughout the week. So if you still would like to receive that virtually, let Pastor Lee or Kathy Evans Butler know, and they will make sure they get that out to you. Unshakable Hope is one of the small groups. The, those guys are in their 30s and 40s. I, I keep looking at that going, wow. <laughs> I feel so old when I say that. <laughs> but they're a small group of our 30s and 40 year olds and they're meeting on July 12th at, th at 3 p.m. Give Pastor Lee a call if you would like to join that group. And they are now reading a book uh, called Fearless. And they want to trust God more and fear God, fear less, and be of the unshakable hope we need in this world. If you want to review a movie or a book, this, is, this was so much fun. So, you know, I know you guys are reading and watching movies. So... Get a hold of Pastor Lee, let him know what movie or book you want to share, and answer these three questions. What's the content of the book or movie? Where did you find God there? And try to find a scripture that went along with the insight that you got out of that movie or book. This is a great way for us to stay connected together and do something together, even though we're not physically together. If you're interested, contact Pastor Lee. 
Send us some photos. What are you guys doing? I see gardening photos and new car photos, but we need more photos. I know you guys are doing a lot of things out there. Take a moment, take a photo, send it to Sandy via email so we can share our lives together and what we're doing uh, while we can't be physically together. Send in your prayer requests. We know that there's a lot going on in your lives. Some of it not so good, and hopefully some of it so wonderful and magnificent. But send your prayer requests in. Share those things in testimony with Pastor Lee, and we will share them during the um, Sunday worship. We need to know that, though, before 9 a.m. on Saturday. And this is time for our children's moment. Um, we had some guests that were going to join them, but since, since uh, they could not make it with us this morning, I thought I would take a moment to talk to you all about the 4th of July. This is what we're celebrating this weekend is the 4th of July. And I know that you've seen flags all hanging everywhere and they hang from the churches, they, they hang from post office, but the flag represents so many things to so many people. And some people, the flag is a representation of pride and, and joy and civil liberty. And for others, they're going through some hard times right now. The flag is not representing all of that. But we as people together and you as young people together know that when we come together and play right together, then we can live under the flag and, and we can all be free. And so as you celebrate your 4th of July weekend, remember that it is about freedom for all and that we're all free because Jesus gave his life for us. So happy 4th of July, be safe, and, not, and stop doing those firecrackers in the middle of the night. God bless you. We're gonna be hearing from our, our, our homegrown group, House Blend, when the roll is called up yonder. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time will be no more And the morning breaks eternal bright and fair When the chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the shore And the roll is called up yonder I'll be there when the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. On that bright and cloudless morning, when the dead in Christ shall rise, and the glory of his resurrection shed. When the saved ones shall gather to their home up in the sky, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, Yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. I'll be there. Oh, 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 oh. Let us labor for the master from the dawn till setting sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. And when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, oh, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there, you'll be there.
I'm not going to say this anymore, but I'm the wrong person to be doing Passing the Peace after having to listen to this fantastic music every week. <laughs> it just makes my heart sore. Thank you, House Flynn. Thank you so much. But this is the time that we pass the peace and pass the joy that we can still have in our hearts, even though we are sheltering in place. So a virtual hug out to all of you and to all of uh, the rest of us, we're going to say peace be with you. Peace be with you. Oop, my fingers, I'm leaving. Peace <laughs> be with you. So God bless you and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Psalm uh, cha uh, chapter 64. Uh, hear me, my God, as I voice my complaint, protect my life from the threat of the enemy. Hide me from the conspiracy of the wicked, from the plots of evildoers. They sharpen their tongues like swords and aim cruel words, words like deadly arrows. They shoot from ambush at the innocent. They shoot suddenly without fear. They encourage each other in evil plans. They talk about hiding their snares. They say, who will see it? They plot injustice and say, we have devised a perfect plan. Surely the human mind and heart are cunning, but God will shoot them with his arrows. They will suddenly be struck down. He will turn their own tongues against them and bring them to ruin. All who see them will shake their heads in scorn. All people will fear. They will proclaim the words of God and ponder what he has done. The righteous will rejoice in the Lord and take refuge in him. All the upright in heart will glory in him. Our next song is Honor and Praise. Fourth of July, we pray for our country, and one of the prayer is for protection from enemies. Actually, that's the title of this psalm. This psalm says, "Prayer for, for protection from enemies." But when we pray this prayer, we have to know who our true enemies are. Otherwise, we are going to have a wrong prayer. During the, during the Independence War, 1775 to 1783, 
Our enemy seemed to be Great Britain. However, the real enemy was oppression. It's not uh, another country. We fought to gain freedom, liberty, and independence. Now we have good relations with the United Kingdom. Actually, some of our members are from England. So <laughs> we, have, we know that our enemy is not certain country or a people that our enemy was oppression. And when you know who our true enemy is, it is easy for us to fight. During the Civil War, 1861 to 1865, our enemies were racism, slavery, and sin of oppression again. Whether you belong to South or North, we had common enemies. We fought together against it. Now we have one nation under God. See, we have to figure out who really our enemies are. Our enemies, they do not give up. As David said in this psalm, they hold fast to their evil purpose. They talk of laying snares secretly, thinking, who can see us? Who can search out our crimes? We have thought out a cunningly conceived plot. That's their thinking. That's why they decide to do some evils. During and after we fought against oppression through independence war, we found ourselves oppressing other humans in our own backyards. You know, that's an irony. We fought against oppression. We tried to be independent from England, United Kingdom, and then we oppress other human beings in our own backyard. That's why we had to go through the civil war again to free ourselves from that sin of oppression and discrimination. We have won our victory together during the Civil War. And finally, President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation on January 1, 1863. However, it took two and a half years to be announced in Texas on June 19, 1865. So that's why we celebrated our Juneteenth again. We continue our fights against our enemies until we are freed from these enemies of the spirit of discrimination. We cannot enjoy our independence. That is the reason why we should continue our fight against our enemies. In other words, our enemies of racism and discrimination. After we won the World War I in 1918, Women won their rights to vote on August 26, 1920. See, the fight continues. They keep coming back. We keep adding our victories in history. We fight four years to defeat the central powers. I mean, Germany, Austria, Hungary, Bulgaria, and the Ottoman Empire, but we fought almost 100 years to defeat the voting discrimination against women. It takes longer time. Outside the enemies, well, four years, enough. Inside the enemies, sometimes it takes 100 years. We are making progress, however, slow but steady. We defeated our sin of slavery in 1863, but we still had to fight through the civil rights movement during 1954 to 1968. Hundred years after the Emancipation Declaration, we enacted the Civil Rights Act in 1964. However, it took half century again to have another victory. The Supreme Court of the USA applied the law Civil Rights Act, Chapter 7, now, and held that employees should not be discriminated because of their sexual orientation. 
It takes time, friends. It takes time. But we should not give up. Because we know that victories belong to God. As the Psalm 64 says, God will shoot his arrows at them. They will be wounded suddenly. Because of their tongue, he will bring them to ruin. All who see them will shake with horror. Then everyone will fear. They will tell what God has brought about and ponder what he has done. We depend on God. On this Independence Day, we declare our dependence on God. We know that we cannot make progress without God's help. Many times, we commit the same sins for which we criticize and blame others. We have to depend on God. When we examine our hearts and minds, we see the same demon that we see in others. That demon appears again and again in different names and forms in human history. Now we realize that our enemies are not other humans or other groups of people. Our enemies are the holders of the power of sin and death. The one that has been defeated by Jesus Christ on the cross. So we shall overcome our enemies. God is working among us. And God is working with us. The Psalm 64 commands us, Let the righteous rejoice in the Lord and take refuge in him. Let all the upright in heart glory. So brothers and sisters, do not be angry because the progress is slow. Independence war took eight years. Civil war lasted four years. So did the World War I and II. However, our fight lasted 100 years, 200 years, and we are making progress, slow but steady. And God bless America. With all the flaws, we have made progress with God's help. Our history shows that we can make progress continually. Even now, this year, we made important progress in the Supreme Court decisions. So we may be still in wilderness. God will guide us again and again and again and lead us to the promised land, the land where everybody is loved and respected. So brothers and sisters, let's just dream a country where everybody is loved and respected, treated equally, and have a fair share of their rights and their voice. For that, let us pray together for our country. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for this wonderful country, a land of the free and home of the brave. Bless our country, America, and make all the peoples living in it. And use our country a channel of your blessings so all the nations in the world should be blessed through us. We pray this in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. There is a way that you can join us in being uh, our mission and ministry service to our uh, greater community. Uh, if you are a member, please do not forget your uh, tithes and offerings and mail your check to Concord UMC, 1645 West Street, Concord, California, 94521. You can also do that through Venmo by entering Concord slash UMC. Online uh, for instructions, visit conqueredumc.org and click the YouTube uh, link, and you will uh, be presented with the How to Give Online uh, video. Pastor Lee is our host for that. And then online uh, bay, uh, pay through your bank, and you can go online and set that up so that will automatically go out uh, as you see that you uh, want that to happen in your finances. And if you're uh, just watching us for the first time, uh, please know that uh, we are not asking you to donate, but if you go on our website and see a mission uh, and service that you see that you want to contribute to, 
please don't hesitate to use one of these uh, uh, ways of doing so. And God bless you as you discern how to give. This is the time for the prayers of the people. We have some prayers that um, have been lifted up to us. Uh, Joanne Johnson is requesting prayer. She is suffering with uh, back pain. We have Midge Sustin. Her daughter Sharon has pre-leukemia uh, pre and is having radical chemotherapy in preparation for stem cell transplant. And her daughter Nancy is being prepped to be the donor. So both sisters need lots of prayers, as well as Midge, who is, we all know now, needing full-time care. Edie Rucker's daughter, Pam, who had back surgery a couple of weeks ago, is back in the hospital with a blood clot in her lung. And so we need pray prayers for Pam and for Edie, who um, is exhausted right now, and because there's been a lot, and you know, we're Facebook friends, a lot going on uh, in the family's life, so prayers for them. Um, our sister Harriet Hazleton is getting her other knee uh, worked on, and we, oh, no, it's been postponed, sorry, due to the increase in COVID-19 cases, so she's going to have to, uh, let's pray for Harriet, because I know that knee hurts and she was really expecting to go into surgery and let's pray for um, a decrease in the COVID-19 numbers. And then from uh, Kathy Evans Butler, prayers for a seven-year-old boy who was struck and hit by a car in, uh, in uh, Martinez and he's in the hospital now under critical condition. We also want to uh, lift up prayers for our own Sandy, uh, she is going in for surgery, dental surgery uh, tomorrow, and even through dental surgery and pain, she's always here. So we need to make sure we lift Sandy up. We want to lift up our brothers and sisters who have joined us in worship from Africa, from the continent of Africa, and from Cuba. And so we thank you for joining us um, during this worship. And please send us any prayer requests that you may have from those places. You are a part of our neighborhood right here in Concord, no matter where you are. We also want to lift up and thank God, uh, as we now know that Pastor Lee, I know, is not going anywhere. So Pastor Lee uh, is going to remain our pastor here at Concord United Methodist Church. And so we give glory to God for all of those things, Pastor Lee. Let us pray together. Thank you, God, for the new life that you added to our congregation. You blessed GE and gave her beautiful daughter, Arian. Lord, bless the new life and the whole family and help all of us to rejoice because you are the source of life. And even though we celebrate the new life, we also pray for all the church members, brothers and sisters who are facing surgeries and recoveries. We lift up those names that we read together. Joanne Johnson, Mitch Sunstone, Sharon, Nancy, Edie Rocker, and Pam, Harriet Hustleton, Kathy Evans, and her neighbor, seven-year-old boy, who killed by her accident, and the family members. And also we pray for those who lost their jobs, our brother, Al Carson, 
and also take care of those who take care of other family members. We pray for Bill who take care of Patty and also we give you thanks for the joy of recovery for our brother Chuck and also we pray for Dean Hall. Lord, we pray for so many people but also we have known that there are people whose name we did not mention but be with them. Also we pray for people in other continent, our brothers and sisters who join this worship in Africa and Europe and Asia and South America. Lord bless all those gatherings and churches who share our worship together to glorify your name. You are the God of the nations and you are the God of the universe. So we praise your name. Be with us all who praise your name. We pray this in the name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. Now it's time for love feast. We have a once a month Holy Communion, but because of COVID-19, we could not get the Holy Communion in the sanctuary together face to face. However, we have this wonderful ceremony that's called the Love Feast. Love Feast, you, you can have any drink, not only the wine or grape juice, and you can have any bread. Uh, any drink and bread will be fine. When you are ready, you can, uh, you can bring those uh, drinks and bread. And when you are ready, you can resume the worship recording and join us, our worship uh, love feast. The love feast or agape meal is actually a Christian fellowship meal. Recalling the meals that Jesus shared with disciples during his ministry and expressing the koinonia, the community sharing fellowship, enjoyed by the family of Christ. This love feast has often been held on occasions when the celebration of the Lord's Supper would be inappropriate, such as when there is no one present authorized to administer the sacrament, where persons of different denominations are present who do not feel free to take Holy Communion together, where there is a desire for a service more informal and spontaneous than the communion ritual, or at a full meal or some other gatherings to which it would be difficult to adopt the Lord's Supper. So we are going to have a love feast. In this online service, we will have a love feast and not Holy Communion, even though we, we use the liturgy of a Holy Communion. If you know more about this uh, love feast, go to the discipleship ministry and you can have more resources. Now you can uh, please post the worship recording now and prepare your love feast elements. Bring your wine and bread. When you are ready, we will resume. Okay, now you are back. So I want to share some of the understanding of the Holy Communion. In the Catholic Church, they have substance theory, meaning bread will be transformed into the body of Jesus and wine will be transformed into the blood of Jesus. They do not share the holy body and blood with the non-members. That's why they don't share their communion with other people. But love feast may be better. And Lutheran church, they have this corn substance theory. That means bread and wine will remain as bread and wine. However, Christ will be with there, with the bread and wine. So that's come together, substance. Substance are together there. That's Lutheran church. And many other um, reformed churches, they have this remembrance theory. And bread and wine are symbols and signs of God's grace and love that we remember. So there is no change or corn substance, but it's a sign and symbol that reminds us of God's grace and power. 
in the Methodist church, we have this uh, unique understanding. Uh, this love of feast or holy communion are the means of grace. We do not focus on bread and wine. We focus on the people who receive them. So everybody can receive them. Non-believers, even those who do not belong to the Methodist church can receive them. Because bread and wine are means of God's grace, which transform people who receive them. It's like the sermon is a means of grace, and I preach it to the non-believers in the hope that they receive Jesus through my sermon. Same thing I do with the Holy Communion. I give Holy Communion in the hope that they receive Jesus through this. Through communion or love feast, we experience God's grace upon us. So, let's uh, do some love feast together. Are you ready to uh, read the liturgy with us? Okay. Christ our Lord invite to his table. It's not my table, it's not your table. To his table, all who love him, who honestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your law. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's take a time of silent prayer for one or two minutes, repenting our sins. Now, brothers and sisters, hear the good news. Christ has died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When you turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made a covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with the sinners, by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, and broke the bread gave it to his disciples and said, Take it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered in front of this computer and TV monitors and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. Now, if you are having worship together with your family, you can share the love feast among your family members. If you are alone, uh, you can take uh, the feast now. Now let us pray once more. Thank you, God. It is always joyful celebration when we gather together around the table to share a meal in your love. Bless all our brothers and sisters who share this love of feast and all the families who share this 4th of July celebration dinners and meals at home. Bless all those who have no food on the table during this economic and financial challenges. They do not have enough money to provide food for their families. So use our churches and all the Christians to be a channel of your blessings for those who are hungry and who have no food on the table. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our next hymn, Weave a Story to Tell to the Nations. Please join us in, in rejoicing. Thank you. 
Lord, a song that will conquer evil and shatter the spirit sword, and shatter the spirit sword, for the darkness shall burn to dawning, and the dawning to noonday bright, and Christ's great kingdom shall come on earth. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of our God and the power and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all our American families and our country which is going to be the lighthouse for all nations ever and forever. Amen. Thank you, everybody. This is going to be a, a virtual online fellowship. And next Sunday, we invite all the church members, but we want to show them how to do this uh, online fellowship together. So we, this is just kind of a demonstration of online fellowship. Because the <laughs> Zoom takes only one voice. If you want to say something, please raise your hand so I can unmute you. Anybody? wants to say a holy joke or some funny stories or some uh, thing to share together. Okay, Bill. Can everybody hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Good gotcha. morning. Uh, I was, uh, wow, it's 40 years ago. Uh, I have a memory from 4th of July. Maureen and I were dating oh. before we were engaged and I uh, went up to Santa Rosa to visit her. And uh, I've always loved the 4th of July. I've always been a fireworks, you know, person. And um, I had some sparklers. Mm -hmm. And I remember that I thought it would be really cool to light, it, to light it and run around her backyard. So I did that, and as I did it, a spark fell on my head and singed my hair. Which oh, is dear. why I am bald. No, 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 it's not why I am bald to this day. But anyway, that's <laughs> just a, a, a rather, um, a rather poignant memory for me. Oh. 
Thank you for sharing your story. <laughs> now everybody knows why you have this. Uh, That's right, yes. <laughs> uh, next person. Okay, Sandy. My 4th of July story is a, is a little more, uh, it was 50 years ago almost. And uh, we always went to Heather Farms Park to enjoy picnicking and the 4th of July. And my husband was a cop in another world. So it usually was me and the three kids, the three boys at the time, who were, hmm, one, three, and four. And so we got there and set out our, our uh, blankets and that and got ready to celebrate amidst the thousands of people who were also camped at Heather Farms Park waiting for the fireworks. Mm -hmm. And there were two families, uh, the O'Learys or the Calhouns and us. And all of a sudden I looked around and the two-year-old, the Charlie of us, wasn't there. And there are thousands of people in this park and I'm looking and there's no little Charlie there. So little Charlie had found a cop or a security guard and said, my dad's a policeman and I'm lost. And they found <laughs> us and returned him to us. And thank God in those days, they didn't put you under arrest for having lost your child. And we had a great 4th of July celebration and I keep track of him ever since. <laughs> wow. Actual lost and found the story. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Okay, this is how it goes. So, okay, Ross. Yeah, well, I don't really have a particular story about 4th of July. I just know that it's, it's always been one of my favorite holidays. I'm a very patriotic person, and as you know, I'm a musical person, so I just love patriotic music. So the chance to do God Bless America today was just a real treat for me. Oh, so it's it was always great. an important holiday for me. Great, great. Well, yeah. yes, Michelle? So my, my favorite um, memory of uh, the 4th of July is when I lived in Boston and I lived in the Back Bay area and um, we used to get um, on our bikes and ride to the Half Shell to listen to the Pops do the uh, concert during the fireworks over the the water there near Cambridge and and that was just like as a kid, the coolest thing, the freedom to be able to leave your neighborhood on your bike, go riding, I mean, many miles away from your house and, you know, hang out as a collective, a group of people enjoying great music um, by the symphony, the Boston Symphony and uh, on that half shell. And I think they still do it. I think they do, so yeah. Great. So brothers and sisters, uh, this is how we are going to have a fellowship online. Next Sunday, bring your funny stories or meaningful stories and one by one, uh, we can share uh, stories together. Just imagine that this uh, screen will be filled with 100 people and we will see each other and share some stories. Okay, till then, God bless America and enjoy your 4th of July and make this a memorable time for all of you, all right? Thank you.